Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Whiskey and Wool. My name is Shannon. I um, am Whiskey and Wool across social media platforms um, on Instagram and on Ravelry. You can find show notes for this episode um, in the box, description box down below, and also I will have linked show notes on Ravelry so you can take a look there. Um, yeah, hi. How you been the last couple weeks? It's been a couple weeks. It is, it is the end of summer, I guess. I hate to say that. I, I love summer. It is just so relaxing and easy, easy living. I'm not teaching, so, and I love teaching, but it's nice to have a break, you know, it makes you appreciate things all the more. Um, yeah, so it's been a couple weeks. This is a, uh, it's September 1st. Wow. So in the U.S. where I'm podcasting or filming <laughs> from, um, it, this is basically back to school week for everybody in the Northeast region. I'm coming to you from Northern New Jersey, which is, um, well, I live right outside of New York City. Um, very easy to get to the city and uh, I don't I don't get there as much as I used to when I was younger I would go to New York all the time I worked in the city and these days I, I go in to see my sons and occasionally to see a friend but mostly my friends come to me or I go to their weekend homes because um, I guess we're all older now we have weekend homes <laughs> um, but yeah so it is a gorgeous 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 weekend it is the weather's just perfect I have windows open it's cooling down at night we're starting to get that like summer wind down we'll still have some very hot days um, it's it's in the, it's been in the mid 70s um, during the day lately and then going down to the upper 50s at night Fahrenheit so I don't know what that is in Celsius sorry European people or other elsewhere in the world, people who don't use Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, well, so let me talk to you. This is a, an, a channel about crafts, yarn, yarny things, mostly spinning and knitting, um, some sewing occasionally, though I haven't sewn in a while. Um, just haven't had the urge to, I just haven't had the urge actually for clothes. Like I feel like I've a ton of clothes. I threw out five bags of clothes at the beginning of summer I bought a few new things, just very few, a couple dresses, a pair of pants, a blouse or two, and I, I haven't even, one of the dresses still has tags on it, so I, I don't need any more clothes, I guess, I especially for spring, summer. Um, so, I have a finished object to share with you, but before I show you that, I want, I have neglected to show you a finished object from a few weeks ago. Um, and it is right here. It is my very first Mochi Mochi World um, uh, knitted objects. I knitted out of scrap. It's a little uh, superwash MCN base, and uh, it's it's already been well loved by my kitty. Um, I made it for him. I saw the the kitten pattern. I'll have to put a picture on screen because I did print the pattern out, but it for some reason it didn't print all the pictures I'm not really sure why um, but yeah I, I saw the pattern on on Instagram and I had to have it because I he my little guy loves to like he loves toys that are small enough that he can get his mouth around and ca he'll carry them around um, so it's super cute it's so so cute so I knew I had to knit this little kitty there there's actually four kittens in the pattern um, I'm gonna try another one my plan is to do another one in worsted weight since this is this is a fingering weight which is what the pattern calls for but she says if you want them to be a little bigger just use a bigger yarn so I'm gonna try a worsted weight and see if I can get I imagine it'll be like double the size but there's one that's kind of oblong shape this is this is square um, but there's one that's like long like kind of sausage shaped I guess so I'm going to try that one in the worsted weight and see um, how my kitty likes that one it's funny you know he's very much aware that this is a rendition of a cat 
<laughs> I guess like seeing those two little dots and the pointed ears, he's already chewed on one of the ears, so it's like a little worse for wear. Um, I, I stuffed it with um, alpaca fleece, so natural alpaca fleece, and I put a little catnip in there just for 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 him to be a little more interested and excited about it. So it's it's worked really well. It's such a cute and fun pattern. I made it in, I don't know, under an hour, probably like 20 minutes or less. So I'm drinking water out of my really awesome and cute cheap mug. Um, I don't remember where I got it from, but I talked about it in a previous episode. Picked it up on Etsy. Um, to replace a sheet mug that I had bought at EYF that broke. I dropped it. It broke. Oh, it was so sad. Um, all right, let me give that to him. <laughs> so I'm not keeping it, not burying it over here. So yeah, my second finished object is my glorious gold along sweater that I'm knitting along with the, um, the Knitting Vicarious podcast viewers or channel viewers, um, uh, it's uh, Dunder Knit is the um, the hostess of that channel, and uh, she it has been hosting a glorious gold along, what she's calling a glorious gold along, where you knit anything gold, create knit, crochet, make anything gold, and um, it's meant to be your Rhinebeck sweater or your Rhinebeck. Um, or even if you're going to rhyme back vicariously. Um, it is a little damp, which is why I don't have Martha over here wearing it or I'm not wearing it myself. It's, it's, I took it off the blocking mat so that I could share it with you. Um, the pattern is Chauncey and it's, it's by Isabel Kramer. It's just beautiful. It, I mean, my camera doesn't know what to do with this clash of colors, but I think you're getting the best reading of them. Like the yellow, the yellowy green down here is much brighter than it's showing. The gold is on point, I would say, and the and the blues in the middle look good, but the rest of it, you're really like this. This blue here is really much more keyed up than what you're seeing, and that that green gold is like probably if I get close, you can see there's also some cat hairs. My cat loves to cuddle with me while I'm knitting because he wants to watch that yarn go by. He's so he's pretty good about not playing with the yarn. Like he understands those are my toys. Um, but um, he does sometimes sneak in a little paw and try to get it to his mouth so he can chew it, um, which we don't want. Um, but anyway, I so far, I mean, I, I can't wait to try it on. It really, I think I talked about this in my last episode that it seemed like it was a little small, but I knew that um, since the yarn I was using is super wash that it would really grow. So um, that's the what I have left of a, of a third skein. I actually have a fourth full skein. I think I'm gonna put this partial skein and the full skein up for sale in my D stash at a really good price. Um, like basically you'll get this extra chunk for, for free. Um, this is like pretty nasty because it's it's still damp. Um, the wool is O wool, which is a she's a New Jersey yarn um, person. Um, but yeah, 100% machine washable certified organic merino, um, 100 gram skeins, 428 yards. For some reason, I bought four skeins. I don't know why. I think there was like a little period of time where I. I didn't think I was buying enough. Like I didn't think for a sweater. Like I thought. I needed more than three, but it turns out I don't. I only need three, and I don't even use all of three um, if I'm doing any other second, like a second color. So three is perfect. 1,200 yards is about what I need for, for a fingering weight sweater. So I'm trying to do better with my sweater quantity purchases, um, though I don't think there'll be any sweater quantity purchases in a while, except maybe with fiber. Um, okay. The, uh, the contrast yarn that you're seeing here in the yoke is one yarn. It is spin cycle yarn. So the color is Truth Bomb, which Truth Bomb makes a rainbow. Uh, when you see it in the skein, like when it's, when it's like, you know, like this, like a caked uh, or um, a, a skein waiting to be caked, you won't see a rainbow. <laughs> in fact, 
I remember seeing like gold and maybe a little green and maybe like a purpley color. I didn't really know what it was inside. I just thought, oh, okay, those are pretty colors. Um, anything that's like blue and green, I know I'm gonna like. Um, so yeah, it turns out it's rainbow. It actually goes from red all the way through the rainbow from Roy G. Biv. <laughs> Um, this particular skein started with the on the on the um, violet side and went um, after this the green it goes into yellow and then orange and red and then it goes to like a neutral color like sort of a beigey brown and then it goes back it starts over again so it, I think it starts back again with the purple if I remember right um, sorry the the skein I didn't use a whole skein I thought I needed a skein and a little bit more but I didn't even use a whole skein. Um, I used about half, maybe slightly more than half. And Spin Cycle, if you're not familiar, do I have, um, you know what, I'm going to have to go get it, so. Okay, Spin Cycle. Spin Cycle Truth Bomb. So this is what I have left, but this is a little bit misleading because I have used some of it in another sweater that's a whip that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Um, and this is a full, kind of full skein. I've used a tiny bit of it. I don't know that you can really see the rainbow though. This one was more muted. The colors were more muted in this one than this one. Or maybe it just started in different places because I think if you see like the blue green in there, it's pretty bright. Um, yeah, actually, so you can see like there's where, that's the color section that I ended up using in, in the Chauncey. So can you, let me put this guy down. So you see that, see in there, there's like that purple, that bluish purple, that's where I started on the Chauncey and then I went through, all the way through to this green right in, that you're seeing right in there. And then what I had left was um, yellow, like this this, this um, pink color is more muted than the the orangey color that I got in the in this skein. And then you can see what I was talking about after it goes from orange, it goes to the, this brown neutrally color, and then it starts over again with the blue, purple, green um, scenario. That's what Truth Bomb does. Um, there are other skeins of Spin Cycle that I've, I've, I caked them all up. Like after I saw what happened with that, <laughs> I'm, I'm caking them all so I can see what's going on because you don't really understand what's going on in the skein, I don't think, until you cake it. So this is another color that I bought. I, I, I don't know the name of this one, but I'll, I'll, find, I'll figure it out and put it on screen. It's in my um, Ravelry um, stash pages. I have everything labeled. And then this is another color which I'll talk about in a sec too. So this one goes from like this blue green to purple and then back to blue green again. Um, there's other colors besides Truth Bomb that span, like you can see like these two look like they're just spanning two, two different colors um, where this one is spanning seven. Um, I should show it to you this way. This one spans seven. So they have other colors that span more than just two, like it's not just two or seven. There's more in between. Like there's one, I'm gonna grab it and so there'll be another like splice in here. Okay, so there's also this, I have this one. I mean, they have certainly more colors than what I'm showing you. Um, but this one right here is called Stay Out of the Forest. It was a color that they introduced at Rhinebeck, it, well actually at Indie Untangled because that's where they vended last year. They're vending there again this year too, if you were lucky enough to get a ticket. <laughs> Tickets were super competitive this year. Um, I've never had a tr trouble getting a ticket in the past and um, I didn't get a ticket this year, so I won't be going, but I won't be going to Indie Untangled, but there's other events. So there, it's, it's actually, there's too many events to go to all of them in my opinion. Um, so it's fine. Um, I'll talk more about Ryan Beck and, and, and the events later and in, in a closer episode. So yeah, you can see that this one has, it's going from orange to blue green. There's, um, there's also like a deep red in there. So this has like three, I would classify this as like three different colors, like red, orange, and the and the blue, green. So this would be a really, I haven't quite figured out what to do with this one yet. Like I don't have a plan for this one. And I don't, 
I, I just am formulating a plan for this blue green here. I'll talk to you about it when I get past when I'm when I'm done showing you all my knitting and I'm talking about my future knits. But this one is still on um, no plan, and and these three are in one of my whips coming up. So not only did I use one skein, so th these are full skeins. I haven't touched these at all, but these other ones I've used. They're, the skeins are always 50 gram put ups. Let me see if I have a, um, yeah, I think I have a tag. So I can make sure I'm telling you the right info. Uh, e nope. Um, yeah, here. So yeah, they're, they call them sport weight, but I've had no problem knitting them along with fingering weight. So I've done two sweaters, two sweaters with the dyed in the wool, which like I said, they call it sport weight. So the skeins are 200 yards, 100% American wool superwash. Um, and uh, they, I paid $32 for them and I bought them direct from them. Um, at the, as I said, at Indie Untangled. So they're expensive. Like if you figure for a regular Indie skein, Indie dyed skein, I don't really have one handy. There's some in, in front of me, but they're all in bags. But like, if you just think about a normal Indie dyed skein, you're, you're getting a hundred grams. So twice as much for the same money. So spin cycle is expensive, but also it seems like it goes a long way. So I was able to use this skein, what, um, when it was whole, I used, I made this sweater and I've used it in a second sweater. I'm done with it. I still have some left. So together I can, you know, I still have a pretty significant amount of that rainbow that I was talking about. Um, so that's exciting. <laughs> it's cool. Um, and you know, I don't know, I'll use them for, for something. They're great accents. Like I, I can understand why like Andrea Maury did sweater after sweater like design after design after design using spin cycle yarns of course like the ultimately like some of those ones that she designed the yarn would have cost you like four or five hundred dollars to knit it just the way that she she did and i know people did it um i don't know if you're spending that much don't complain about a pattern being eight dollars because if you're spending four hundred dollars on yarn you can afford eight dollars <laughs> uh anyway yeah, so this is my Chauncey sweater. That is, it was a, it was a fun knit. I loved watching the spin cycle yarn change in my, in the yoke. And then after that, it's just mindless knitting, which I always love to have at least one mindless knit on the needles. I did make one small error. I didn't do my short rows properly. So you see those holes right there. That's, those are from the short rows. So I have to, when, once it's dry, I'll have to get back in there and, and just um, stitch those shut. I only had it on that side. The other side, you you can kind of see, but it's not, there's not holes. Like you can see where I've made the, yeah. I just wasn't paying attention. I was watching a movie when I was doing it and uh, as I usually am when I'm knitting. And I just wasn't, um, wasn't paying attention to how I was picking up the short row, you know, the stitch after the short row. So, uh, well, since I'm doing all this splicing and whatnot, I'm going to just go put this down and come back and splice in here again. Okay. Now let me tell you about my whips. I am working on, let me start with the one that has the other spin cycle yarn in it. Um, I'm working on the throwback sweater by Andrea Mowry. It is my first Andrea Mowry pattern that I've ever made. And I know this was a big sweater last year. I don't know what I was doing last year, but I wasn't interested in knitting this. Um, I became interested in knitting it because of all of the dribs and drabs of, oops, uh, oops, <laughs> of all of the, not, I shouldn't say dribs and drabs, but the three or four full skeins of spin cycle yarn that I had laying around. And I, I thought that um, I would um, I would like to you know maybe use those up and I knew that 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 the throwback sweater was written for spin cycle and when I looked at the pattern on Ravelry before I purchased it I saw that it was worsted weight and I really don't wear a lot of worsted weight sweaters I prefer fingering weight to wear um, I like to layer fingering weight over other lighter weight knits and um, 
and then you know more i i prefer to dress in layers i guess rather than putting on like one heavy weight layer um so i never bought dream state except for one project which i've already knit with and 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 made and you've seen it i've showed it off on this channel so instead i bought a bunch of the dyed in the wool which um is known as a sport weight i think i went over all of that already <laughs> repeating myself here um so I, I wanted to use it in, in some sweater and I, so I swatched for the throwback using fingering weight just to see, just to mess around and see if I could make it work. Um, I am lucky in that in most patterns, I'm neither the smallest nor the largest. So I'm somewhere in the middle. I usually fall out size wise in the middle or towards the like in the in the first third if they're if it's someone who's really doing like a very wide range um, inclusive pattern writing um, so I'm able to I was able to from my gauge swatch figure out what size I should make to get a size to fit me so I think I'm knitting the six size one two three four five six yeah I'm knitting size six to get a size two to three um, probably more a three so that's how I'm managing um, with the fingering weight. And you can see that the pattern, of course, like this needs to be blocked badly because um, it's really ripply. But I mean, I'll block it at the end. It'll be fine. Um, but all this will lay flatter. There's a lot. Of, she has you do, if, I don't know if you've knit it before, but she has you do in the pattern a lot of rapid increases. Like there's a rapid increase row and then another, then you do color work, then another rapid increase row. So that makes this very bumpy. It'll all smooth out in the blocking, of course. I'm also going to be steaking. This is my first time steaking. Um, so that's what these markers are, are indicating here. And, and that's why it's knit together up here. So I'll be cutting it. I'm, I'm um, knitting this for also for Rhinebeck. So this will be um, Christy Glass is running a steak. Her, her tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater this year is um, tell me about your Rhinebeck steaking right, you know, or something. I don't know what she's calling it steak and streak. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I, all I know is that we are to wear our unsteaked sweaters ready so that the last thing you have to do is just cut it and it's ready to wear. Um, so that, I, I have plenty of time. I, I think I'll be fine and I'm highly motivated to get this done because I love it. I'm so pleased with the way the colors came out. I, If you remember a couple episodes back, I was a little dubious about the, um, about the pattern um, I'm, I'm sorry about the color. So this was my this was my gauge swatch that I made, and I wasn't quite sure that I was gonna like this main color um, of the yarn. And I um, this is Tuka wool that I got at um, EYF, 100% finish wool. I bought it from Uzolda's shop. And uh, what else can I tell you about it? The color, I, I think, can only be described as mauve. I feel like it's not really purple, it's not really pink, it's kind of that in-between weird color that can only be described as mauve. It's got kind of some brown and some gray and black in it. Um, it's really, really pretty. It's a, it's a great color. I think it'll be flattering on my skin. <laughs> No, realizing that I'm in the shadows over here. It, you know, it suddenly got dark. It was gorgeous out, and it, we are supposed to have some rain tomorrow, but um, it suddenly got dark like it might be, I mean, it's clouding up, so it may be, may be um, gonna, storm clouds gathering, right? Um, but yeah, I love it. I'm so excited about it, and I, um, I it will now be my, um, It'll. it's my next mindless knit. I just dropped some stitches, so I'm gonna try hard not to pull those out. I'll fix it later. Um, now that my Chauncey sweater is done, that had been my mindless knitting for um, working on while I'm at work and in meetings and whatever. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I, I have a new one. <laughs> I'm sort of obsessive, I've realized. I'm really obsessive about work when I'm doing top down, working th from the shoulder to the armpit where I get to the mindless part. Um, what, what I consider mindless where I can just knit around and round and round with it, very little thinking. I, I make myself push through that part really quickly. So I have 
um, well, I have one other sweater, one other one other um, whip that I'm going to show you that I that I just worked through after I got the Chauncey done. I worked it through to that point as well. Um, this is a textured knit though, so it's not incredibly mindless. It's not just stockinette like the um, throwback and like the Chauncey was. Um, this is a uh, new design. Show you. I showed it last week, so I'm just I've made a little progress on it. Um, I have now joined the fronts to the back and um, made the the armhole. I'll tell you about it in a second. It will have a. Um, I'll tell you my plan in a second. It will have a uh, like a, a four or so button um, band right here, like a Henley like that Henley design. Um, I made a, a little error, which I'll, I'll circle back to. I'll, um, but this is for me, it is made out of, um, the textured stitch is called Mistake Rib, and it has a lot of stretch, has a lot of give. Uh, I'll show you the, the gauge swatch, because once I blocked it, it really, really flattened out. Um, so that's what it looked like, what it looks like. So I expect that this will do the same. Like this will really flatten out um, in the in the blocking. Like it'll really grow substantially. Um, I did match my gauge to the swatch, so I think I'm I'm doing fine. Um, this pattern that I'm designing is based on a store bought sweater that I ha wear, have bought and worn from J. Crew, and it's just a really simple, what I would call a, like a layering piece. It's a really, it's a fine gauge rib knit layering piece, um, and ju with just a crew neck. And um, the thing with this silhouette is that I have a bunch of them, and I wear them like a uniform practically. Like if I want to just look pulled together. You know, I could throw a shawl around my neck if I want a little splash of color. So I have a lot of them in, in neutral colors. Um, and I, so what I did was I took that sweater and I specced it. And then from the spec, I just started to, um, where I worked with the swatch and then just started to design. So that spec, sorry, <laughs> yarn on my nose. Um, the spec of this the actual crew neck that I have and I realized I could go get it and show it to you but I have all my knits all my winter knits and fall knits still wrapped up because it's still I'm where I'm in a tank top <laughs> it's still very warm um I'll have them out probably towards the end of September but um I I keep them all wrapped just to protect them from 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 moths really mostly um because we do get moths occasionally here I live in a pretty wooded area so um you wouldn't think it living so close to New York, but there's a lot of areas around the city that are wooded and we have a pretty wooded area. So um, before we had our house power washed in the spring, there were a lot of those clothes moths like around um, the entryway and stuff. And I found a couple in my area. My cat loves to chase them and hunt them and kill them, um, but he doesn't get them all. So I, I got a little paranoid and I just wrapped everything up. Um, so anyway, uh, going back to the spec of the J. Crew layering piece, the actual bust measurement is 36 and my bust measurement is 39. So I, the negative ease, right? Um, so this one I'm knitting to have about zero to two inches positive ease um, so that I don't have that negative ease. Just so I think it'll be a little more comfortable um, than that one. The, though that one's super comfortable it's really it's rib knit so it's it has a lot of give when you when you put it on and it doesn't it's not skin tight by any stretch of the imagination like you would think with that much negative ease it's not skin tight at all um has it it, it sits it lays nice it's beautiful so um so yeah this is a design that i'm working on i so i i'll tell you about the yarn in a minute it i made a little boo-boo when I was designing. I just did this earlier today. I, I, if you can see right here, there's my, my uh, beginning of row pattern marker. So of course, because um, the way I was joining it, it's, I had an opportunity to have my beginning of row at my underarm and I don't know why 
I was fixated on it being right here because I think when I was joining the fronts and back, I was starting here and going all the way around. So I, of course, thought that's where the beginning of the row should be. But then after I did a couple rows, I realized that I'm probably going to, though I matched the pattern, I'm probably going to have a little bit of a jog. I don't know, though. This pattern's pretty busy, and maybe after blocking, you won't see very, you won't see much. Because um, the pattern does, is seamless. Like, it is the way that I, you know, where it's got these, where you're seeing these raised, um, you can see them, right? Yeah, these raised ridges here, I have that perfectly spaced in where I've added the stitches and stuff, but... Nevertheless, this is where the, the row changes. So the stitch pattern changes right at this point. Why didn't I let it be in the underarm? I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just like, I actually even cut the yarn to move it. And now that I've moved it, I don't think I can move it back. So I'm just going to go with it. Um, I'm going to knit a few more inches. If it really, really bugs me, I'll rip back and um, go back to where I cut the yarn and then put the make the beginning a row under the under the left arm I don't know so silly and um I had said last week and I am going to continue to do to plan this I am planning to make two more versions of this I have yarn um one yarn I'm spinning to make another one sorry about the incredible crinkling nonsense um so this is a I've spun it into a sport weight um, so this will be one and then I have some uh, MCN from plucky that'll be another it'll be a variation that one's going to have some color blocking in it because I wasn't able I bought I bought the plucky yarn at um, some of it I bought in a D stash which is such a great way to get yarn <laughs> it's such a great way to get yarn um, so I bought some in a D stash and the other one I got at Vogue Knitting Live and uh, I didn't, her booth at Vogue Knitting Live in New York last January was a madhouse. It was hard to get into. So I ended up in the booth, like at the end of the day, it was pretty empty. They were like kind of cleaning up and wrapping up the day and um, everyone, people were leaving and I was hanging out because I was going to an event after after um, on the Saturday of Vogue and I swung in there and was able to get some yarn that went well with the yarn I had bought in, in a D-stash. So um, that'll have some sort of color blocking stuff going on in it um, as opposed to just being um, all one color. Oh, I didn't tell you about the yarn here. This is a Qing fiber yarn. I don't think she, it's part of her normal, um, offerings so it's called tweed sock but i found it to actually a sport base and she says it's 100 grams 400 meters i don't recall i recall it being heavier <laughs> um it really knit up like a sport base more than or maybe a heavy fingering it's definitely thicker than regular old fingering though um and I, i'm not sure if it's superwash or not i'm, I'm assuming it is but uh, I had bought a sweater's quantity of it. I bought it a couple years ago. I'd planned to use it for another sweater. I swatched for that sweater and it just wasn't working out for me. So I was repurposing it into um, into this layering piece. The yarn kind of, it really reminds me of like Grateful Dead tie-dye. <laughs> There's something about it. Um, not maybe so much when it's knit up um, as when it's in the in the cake. Um, and I have so far not been alternating skeins because I am I'm, I'm a little worried because this does look darker than the um, yarn I've been knitting with. So I will start alternating um, alternating skeins in now that I have joined the body. So that's another fun thing. Um, another thing I'll be I'll, ha I'll have another jog I suppose um, somewhere. So. Um, I don't know that I can do the helical knitting in a pattern, so I have to go back and look at some of the tutorials and see if in a in a textured knit pattern if the helical knitting will work. So I get a jogless join because I don't know if you're slipping three in this pattern. This is a basically a two by two where you're just kind of moving around where you're doing the two by twos. Um, I'm not sure it would work, so I may have to do a little experimenting. That might be something else to experiment with on this pattern. So. 
Also not positive I'm gonna put that up for sale. I don't think I'm gonna put it up for sale in the mistake rib. So if I end up doing, with this one, I might just do a two by two rib or one by one even. I don't think I'll do one by one or maybe a three by one. Um, that pattern repeat, the mistake rib is like a seven stitch repeat. It's like kind of an odd number. I don't know if I wanna try to fudge that in a pattern and grade it. Um, I just don't know. I, I have to get a little smarter about the way that I'm writing patterns and stuff since I'm not making a, um, any money really on my pattern writing. Um, and I think there's some ideas out there. Like there's some other people who are just beginning um, pattern writing and they're, they're doing different things like, so adding all the inclusive sizing and stuff is something that can be done in a different way than um, like, so maybe like one size or I don't know. Things to think about. All right, are those my whips? I think those are my whips. I think I'm done, yeah. Oh my God, so I'm back again. I'm, I don't know where I'm gonna stick this little piece in, probably in my um, knitting section, but uh, I, I, I was all done filming and I realized that I I didn't talk about my rinoculus cal. So I am um, knitting the rinoculus sweater, I'll put a picture here on screen, out of my own hand spun. It delights me to no end to be able to use my hand spun right away. So as soon as I get a sweater's quantity, I like to make something out of it. Um, and one of my viewers said if I made a rinoculus, she would knit along with me. So she and I are knitting along. I think there might be a couple other people interested, but today, September 1, is our cast on day. Um, so this is the, um, just wanted to make an announcement. This is the fiber that I'm using, or the yarn that I'm using. It was, it's an 80-20 um, silk, sorry, wool, merino silk blend, 80% merino, 20% silk. And I have swatched it. Do I have the swatch here? I, no, I do not. I wonder what I did with it. <laughs> um, but I did swatch. I got gauge. Um, the pattern is written for, um, it's by, it's by, um, here it is. It's um, by Midori, Knit Cafe Midori is her company name, but her name is Midora, Midori High Rose. Um, it's an old pattern, it's from 2017. But uh, it's really, really pretty. I'm gonna do, I think, this short sleeve um, version here. You knit on, you knit a fingering weight on very big needles, so on uh, US size 10, which um, I think that's like eight millimeter. Let's see if it says here. Six millimeter, is that right? Yeah, okay, so US size 10 is six millimeter um, needles. So, yeah, so you, um, yeah, it's a nice loose gauge and I think it'll be awesome for, I mean, I know these colors are kind of springy, but whatever, um, I'll wear it for, it'll, I think it'll be awesome for holiday season. That was what my thought, like for that, for like a holiday event or um, things like that when you're, when you want something like a little fresh and um, a little lacy and sexy, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you wanna join, there's plenty of time. I think I've made the cal go through October, but I don't think we're gonna need that long. So I don't know. I mean, I've read that people have knitted in two weeks. So I don't know that I'm gonna get it knit that much, but I will be casting this on. As soon as I'm done with my editing and stuff, I'll be casting this on. So I'll be talking about this in my next episode. Hopefully it won't be done. Maybe it will be. I, I don't think it will be though, because I, I like to have a lot of whips and uh, I've got to get through that yoke. It's a top-down knit, so that, that top yoke has a lot of texture patterns, which I'm excited to play around with. I think that could be really fun. I can't believe I forgot to talk about this. So now you know. Join us if you want. It's on. Um, we have a talk, a little talk chatter group on um, Ravelry, and you can post also post on Instagram if you want. All right, see ya. Okay, um, I'm, I'm spinning. So let me show you the spinning. I finished my Classy Squid Valaris spin, and this is now a sweater's quantity. Um, it is a fingering weight. I have a little over 1,200 yards. I think I have about 1,250, which is perfect. 
Um, it is from, the fiber is from Classy Squid. Whoops. Can you see that? There you go. Yeah, so um, the bags were two ounces. They were Rolags. Uh, you can see the blend there on screen. And uh, the colorways Volaris after a fictional city um, in the books of A Court of Thorn and Roses. Um, it's a, it's the, the Night Court city capital. This fat one is, I used the last bits and pieces that were um, left over from the, these two uh, when I got to this one. So this one is about an extra hundred yards than these two. So it's, yeah, it, it's cool. It's just super fat, super fat. Um, but I, I absolutely love the way this spun up. It is so witchy looking. It's got like, it's black and purple with shots of peach and pink and um, blue in it and there's a little bit when I was spinning it I saw some there was some gold I don't know if, or maybe yeah right there you can see some gold um, and it was a um, there it is again it was a really like sticky wool I don't know which of the wools that are on this list that it was um, but it was super sticky and interesting so it would just it was grab it would grab right onto the other um, fibers that were there the the peach color and the blue they were silks of some sort and then there's also like a little hint of metallic it's not overwhelmingly metallic but that you get a little flash of metallic from time to time it's really really gorgeous I'm so happy I have enough to make something um, something fun I don't know I'm probably gonna do some sort of pull over but I don't know I don't know what exactly I'm gonna just let that hang out um, in my stash for a while while I while I wait for the right inspiration to come along um, so spinning wise other than that the only other thing I did was I took a couple of um, my single skeins that I've been working on to get a collection of oh I hear thunder hopefully hopefully you're not hearing it too loudly um, so I took a couple of my single plies and I made them into DK weight for the baby blankets that I'm planning to make. So I, I don't quite, ha I still have another like five or six skeins of singles that I'm planning to make into, um, DK weight. So what I do is take a single ply, commercially spun single ply. This particular one is from Stranded Dye Works. It's this, it's, um, she call, used to call it solo. Now she just calls it single ply. Uh, it, the colorway is sister and it was 400 yards, um, 100 grams. And, uh, now it's a DK weight and it's about 200 yards. <laughs> so this will go into one of the, um, baby blankets that I'm planning. This one here is sorry, not sorry. And the reason that you're seeing that this is so much smaller, this is less, um, less yardage and less weight. I don't know what happened. This is from Hedgehog Fibers. So I have pretty much de-stashed all my Hedgehog Fibers. I have a little bit left up for sale. Um, I just got kind of an icky feeling about the way she was doing business. And uh, she she was actually in business with someone that I, who's who I really have no respect for. Um, and that like, I don't know, show me who your friends are and you show me who you are, that I, old adage. So I just like kind of got, it goes back to what I've been saying. I say I feel like I say this practically every episode. You know, the market's saturated. Buy from people whose values match yours. And um, yeah, so I've gotten rid of almost all of my hedgehog fibers. Um, this is one of the last few skeins that I had have of hers. I think I have one or two others. I still have a couple that are in d stash too and on my d stash page um, if you're interested at a very good price i might add <laughs> um yeah so this i must have used this for something i know i used it to swatch because i was planning to use it in a sweater but now i've i've put in something else an another hot pink from a different yarn maker um so yeah i don't know what happened i'm it's it's only 85 grams instead of um hundred so it's only about 160 yards now in the DK weight but that's fine because the 
Stephen West pattern that I'm using calls for two colors to be 200 yards and three colors to be 150. So it should be okay. And if it's not, I'll just, I'll put another pink in the, in the blanket. But I think now that I've got these two done, I have enough, I have a good mixture. I definitely have enough skeins, but whether or not they go together, but I have a nice palette now for a pink and orange or pink and peach, um, blanket so so that that brought me up to that so th this was the only other spinning I did but this Valaris really took the majority of my spinning time um, over the past couple weeks so now spinning wise I will be working on the rest of um, the Countess Ablaze red color I think she call she calls it a heart's beguilement and I talked about this a couple episodes back this fiber um, when I first made this um, I just was so surprised like I mean of course you when you look at the fiber you can see that it's got a lot of red in it but I was surprised how dominant the red was like I bought the fiber because I loved the contrast between the blue and green and the limey green in there and the red but of course you put red and green together you're gonna get some shade of brown or like a golden color and what you're seeing here in the cake and in the spun yarn is that in fact yeah the the colors all got muted and that blue almost looks just gray like you can see that it's still like if you look at it up close you can definitely see the pale blue but it's not nearly as vibrant as it is here in the fleece well, maybe it is maybe it's just like from a distance anyway um i am going to be spinning the rest of this I think this is going to make a really awesome layering piece let me tell you the fiber it is it's combed top wait I want to just put that one down because I've already started to spin this one so I want to keep my I bought um 100 gram bags so I'm making each 100 grams a skein one skein so and it's it's spinning up into a sport weight um, as I said before, so I actually have an extra, I'm going to have an extra cake of this or an extra skein of this. It's 8515 Coradel and Sea Cell, and Sea Cell is um, a, a plant-based fiber that's made out of seaweed. That was on her website, on Countess of Blaze's website. Um, and it's combed top, as you can see. So um, in this one, I did color management where I really tried hard to keep the red and green separate. I'm not gonna do that with this second spin, um, with my second skein. I have, um, like I said, I have an extra one. So I'm gonna just see how it, I don't think I'm gonna see a big difference between um, doing a straight spin off of the comb top, like just pulling, randomly versus doing color management and, and by color management what I meant what I mean is that I you see it, how it's red on that side and blue on that side I pulled I would actually pull those apart so I separated the blue and the red as much as possible I let the white go wherever it wanted to go and then the yellowy green I tried to get it with the blue as much as possible um, so that was how I spun this cake um, so we'll see what happens um, with me just flat out spinning it without um, managing it. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. And that I think is about it. Oh, I have one knitting project that is on my mind that um, I guess now that it's full, it's another spin cycle. I'll be using spin cycle. And oh, and I promised to circle back to the whole designer thing um, that I was talking about before. I have talked about um, my thoughts on designer patterns, as I said, but I want to just talk to you about some of the stuff going on. Um, okay, so after EYF, I had a, I had one of those regrets, those yarn, you know, I didn't buy that yarn purchase regret, and it was this yarn here. This is by Ushushita. Um, if you're unfamiliar with her, she is an indie dyer, I believe, in the Netherlands. Um, and this is called Squirrel Kids. It's what she calls Squirrel Sock. Um, and she and her partner have been raising squirrels the last year. They, they found, I think they found some baby squirrels um, abandoned and they ended up raising them. And then those squirrels had more babies. And I don't know, I guess they're squirrel grandparents now or whatever. Um, but she, they were planning to release them back into the wild and then they had, they found them with babies and, um, they didn't want to release them into the wild with, uh, I, ha I haven't been keeping up on the squirrel saga. Um, but nevertheless, <clears throat> this color, she 
released it at EYF this past year in March, and I w really wanted some, so she had a sale. She announced it in a sale, so I bought a sweater's quantity. So I've got three skeins of this lovely reddish brown. It's so pretty, um, and it's, I love the tonality of it. She says there's br uh, bronze Stellina in there, but I hardly see it. I mean, once in a while, a little shimmer. It's not heavy shimmer, because as you know, I don't really like heavy sparkle on my person, unless it's like a blanket. Um, so I'm gonna try a sweater with by combining these. Uh, I don't know, I've been like just obsessing about this, this color idea so i'm going to cake these and do some swatching so probably next episode i'll have swatching and i'll have um a better idea of what pattern i'm going to do i i'm pretty sure i'm gonna do i think it's called garden gate by jennifer steingast so i'm gonna put that pattern here um on screen i was i was thinking about doing a caitlin hunter pattern but then a bunch of proverbial shit hit the fan this week surrounding her um it was her own doing she had for whatever weird reason blocked one of the um bipoc the bipoc knitters on instagram for some unknown weird reason um you can I'll, I'll put in my show notes. I'm not going to link them, but I'll put the name without the hashtag or without the, um, the at because I just don't want to draw attention to people that may be exhausted. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you some hints in the notes um, so that you can go fig find out what happened if you want to read up on it. There's some, some other, not the person herself. She's now made her account private. I don't know. She's probably going to get attacked by people that are trying to defend Caitlin Hunter, and she'll probably get her account taken away for a brief, whatever, couple days. I'm sorry to say, like that's probably that's just the way it seems to be going. Like um, that's what happened to people that were in conflict with the sock guy back in June. So here we go again. Remember, I said when that happened, I said wait. There will be more. And here we are. We have more. More more people revealing that, revealing their true feelings and not dealing with the issues that are important to our entire community. And if we're going to be a united community, these issues need to be worked through and they need to be talked about. And, um, and that's, by what I mean by these issues is like issues of inequality and issues of um, discrimination and issues of exclusion um i got my kitten <laughs> i got you oh my goodness you're so cute everybody wants to see your cute little face oh look at you isn't he gorgeous cat break cat break <laughs> look at his little black paws they're so cute you got pretty shoes we like your shoes all right he is not a cuddly cat. Once in a while, lets me pick him up. Um, but yeah, and then he likes to get on my... Now I've got cat hair all on my nose. So yeah, anyway, as I was saying, she... So Caitlin Hunter uh, kind of exposed herself as having some issues with um, being, being racist. She exposed herself with being racist. And um, maybe... Okay, no, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna do it. I was gonna... <laughs> I was gonna take a stab at thinking why, but I'm not. I'm not gonna try to explain it. That's not for me. It's not my place to explain away any anything she does. So anyway, I, I it gave me pause. So the stuff she get, she did gave me pause. I had already I, I had already sort of decided I wasn't gonna do. I haven't done the Soldatna crop. I probably never will. At this point, um, I, I had already decided I wasn't on the Caitlin Hunter train anyway. <laughs> um, I decided that over a year ago, um, maybe maybe more. I just don't like the way she specs. Like her specs just don't work on my body type. So I, um, I just decided not for me. And I also don't like how her designs are so of the moment, you know, like 
if you if you see someone wearing a, at least for me if i see someone wearing a sunset highway sweater i know that was two years ago um so i don't like that i don't like wearing a piece that feels like it's dated um so I, i'm looking for more classic i guess uh designs and um i find that yeah so those are my reasons um so please please do your own as i always say like do your own um soul searching and your own thoughts like search through your own thoughts about how you feel about uh what happened um and uh yeah i mean the nutshell version is just that she blocked this person and then when this person was asking her why what happened her she just had a bunch of flimsy excuses and came around to the ended up saying back to the person my first instinct was right i should have kept you blocked like i should just um, you're just going to be blocked now which was just weird. I don't know. It was a very uncalled for, in my view. Just uncalled for and not um, cl being being kind of closed minded. And yeah, I don't I don't respect that. <laughs> Bottom line, I just don't respect that. So um, that is my episode. I think I think that's everything. Did I show you everything? Yeah, I have one other future cast on over here, which I'll talk about next time because that's going to be my travel knit. Um, I think. So, um, and oh, and I've, I've been like, maybe this might be a boxy. I'm not sure. Not sure. Not sure I want to go there. I'm not sure I have enough yardage either. So I need to check that out. Um, but that could be a cool boxy, I think. Anyway, um, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate comments. I read everyone. I comment back when I see them. Um, and I will monitor the space if I always moderate and mon monitor my comments, both here and on Instagram. And I, you know, if anyone's saying something that I think is making others feel unsafe, I will um, uh, delete the comment or moderate the comment. I will be moderating. So please feel comfortable um, here in this space. And if you um, I like to say, you know, if, if, if you're welcoming to the community, the whole community, <laughs> besides the, not the racists, <laughs> no one should welcome racists. They should be confronted. Um, but everyone else, like uh, people who are, are trying and learning and, and, and growing, um, and, and people who have been marginalized, um, everybody, I want them to feel welcome here. So... Yeah. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoy your next couple weeks. I will be back in touch soon with more knitting and spinning content. Bye.